So the very first thing that we need to do is pick out a theme. So all I had to do was Google around for free bootstrap theme, free HTML template. Uh, you could also go to certain sites like Theme Forest, Theme Hunt, and you can find a whole bunch of different templates that are static HTML and they're just ripe for making into a theme for your static site generator of choice, in this case, 11D.js. So we're gonna dive in to the code and take a look at what we need to do to get this set up and configured for your theme. In this case, I found this, uh, this lovely free uh, theme. Uh, it's actually a freemium theme. You can pay to get some, uh, some pro support and stuff like that, uh, but it's called Flat Theme Lite. It's from Theme Hunt. Uh, and so basically all I've done so far is download this and it comes with uh, a few different uh, page types as well as all the, the initial assets that we need to create the site, including HTML, uh, including CSS, JavaScript, some images. They're all placeholder images right now. And so we're gonna bring over the files that we need into our 11D.js website over here. So we have clientsite.com as a directory here. We've got the themes files over here. And so we definitely need all of the assets. And again, the asset structure is uh, CSS. There's some fonts in there, an images directory, a JavaScript directory. There is SAS. I'm not gonna deal with setting up SAS and, and a watcher in this video. For that, you can go find any number of great Gulp tutorials, Webpack tutorials, et cetera. Uh, but that is there if you do want to make CSS edits. Uh, a big thing for me in this tutorial is I'm using everything stock from this theme, including colors, fonts, everything. So we won't be touching a single drop of CSS in this video, which actually is very, very difficult for me to do. So let's go back up. Uh, the structure of the website that I plan on us building is we're going to have a home page, we're going to have a services section, an about page, a testimonials page and a contact page. And all those are directly in our theme files over here. For now, we will use a contact page. We want to bring copies over and not the actual files. Index two, contact. We want to have a services page. We want to have a testimonials page and an about page. So all I've done is actually just bring these over into my project. And now we're gonna open up Visual Studio Code and take a look at our structure. We have everything that we need over here, a lot of HTML files. Go ahead and rename index two over to index. So now if we were to open our index page in a browser, we can see we have the very basics of a theme right here, ready to go. And as you can see, the navigation isn't quite right, but we can take a look at all the other pages that we've got. We've got a services page, and it's got a few different template styles. We'll actually probably be using this template style here. And there's a testimonial page. It's got a little rotator. We'll be using this as well. And then finally, our contact page. Our contact page has a little bit of, of global information with the address, phone number, email, some social media. There's a contact form on the right-hand side. And then there's a map with a location. That's just an embedded Google map. We're not using the Google Maps API. So let's go ahead and work on the start of getting our 11D.js theme set up. So we have all the HTML. We now need to install 11D for this project. And to do that, we need to create a package.json in this project. So we're gonna run npm in that, and I'm just gonna do dash y, and that's gonna give us a yes answer to all the different questions it's gonna ask just for quickness. It's gonna create that package.json. And then I'm going to run npm install at 11D slash 11D. And this is the 11D package that's gonna be running our static site. So this is gonna take a minute to install and uh, we're just gonna speed that up in post process. All right, so now that we have 11D installed, we need to go ahead and set up our configuration values for our project. To do that, we're going to go into a file called .11d.js. That's the default configuration file for 11D. So we're gonna go ahead and .11d.js. We're gonna create that file. This is a Node.js module, so we need to go ahead and set up an export for it. So module.exports equals, and we're gonna use a function that has a property or an argument of 11D config that is actually the configuration object that we can then extend if we need to uh, along our process. So that's gonna return a simple object that's gonna have the basics of our configuration options passed into it. The first of which is going to be the directory structure the 11D is expecting. 
So that's a uh, directory property that we're going to add to that, which contains an object of a few different values that we can customize for our project. The first is going to be the input folder that we want to specify for the HTML and layouts of our project. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and say input colon, and we're going to call this one source. And then we're going to specify an output directory as well. And this one is going to be uh, underscore site. And this, these can be anything you want them to be, whatever fits your site structure the best. And then we can also specify where we want our views to be. And uh, in this case, it's in the includes property. And I'm just gonna have that be the includes directory, uh, which will be a relative path to our input directory. So we'll save that in. Oh, we're gonna correct that comma that we're missing. And then we're also gonna specify a few uh, extensions to the 11D configuration object. We're gonna do that up here outside of our return. And we're going to add in a pass-through copy of our assets directory. 11D doesn't need to touch the assets directory, so we're just going to have it uh, go directly from the root of our project into our underscore site folder. And we have to tell 11D to do that with this configuration value. So we're gonna use 11D config. And then inside of that, there's a method called add pass-through copy. And we're just going to pass that in a string that is the, uh, the glob for our pass-through uh, folder. So in this case, it is the assets folder that we want to pass through. And then we also, in our return object, need to tell 11D that it's okay to copy these files. So we're going to say for our pass-throughs, we want file copy. So pass-through file copy is now set to true. So now when we save this, we can come into our console and we can run mpx, which is the local npm command, 11D dash dash serve. And what we should get is an underscore site folder over in the, uh, in the file viewer on the left. All right, you'll notice that we get some, uh, some extra information down here. We get a, a browser sync URL, but we also see that only one item was, uh, was copied and processed because we actually don't have that source directory set up yet. But you'll notice that our assets did all get copied into our site directory. So now we need to change our file structure to actually put all of our pages into an SRC folder. So let's add a new folder called SRC. And we're just gonna take the about, contact, index, service, and testimonial HTML pages and toss them in there. Move them. And now you can see our terminal updates and it shows that we're actually seeing all of those files added, writes those files into our site directory. And now if we view the local host 8080, our site is now appearing on that browser sync server. From here, we're going to create a base template that will include our navigation, our footer, and our banners for each page. And before we move on to the next video, be sure to like and subscribe down below so you're notified of all my new content as it comes out. Yeah.